Hello and welcome to WordPath. My name is Alice Anderton, producer of WordPath, but tonight our show is sort of a dual function special show. I have a, um, my friend Jeanette Dubois is our special guest host tonight. Welcome, Jeanette. Thank you, Alice. It's just been a really delight uh, to be invited to come to your show this evening and share it jointly with us since you are a new community producer uh, with a title of Word Path. And we have been doing for many years a community producer showcase. And I'm mm -hmm. so happy to have a tribute to Alice Anderton here <laughs> this evening. And did I get the name right? <laughs> <laughs> Anderton, right. And, okay. So many people want to call me Anderson. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Alice, could you tell our viewers a little about you, a little brief bio, uh, where you went to school or whatever uh, kind of in general? Well, I went to school at McGill University as a French major, and then I went to um, UCLA to study linguistics for many years, and I wound up with a PhD and came to Oklahoma State for my first teaching job, where mm -hmm. I taught for two years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, since then, I've worked off and on at University of Oklahoma, so I moved down here in, I guess, 92, I believe. And um, right now I'm mostly doing independent consulting and producing the show and trying to kind of do some networking and get to know the different uh, people involved in Indian language preservation in the state because that really is my specialization as a linguist. Uh -huh. I like to study how best to preserve the Indian languages that are so threatened with, with extin extinction today, really, if we don't do something pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're so proud to have you as our distinguished person this evening as a tribute to you because you're contributing so much to Norman and the surrounding and metro area, as you say, Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Native Americans mm -hmm. and preserving their language and history and culture, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. Well, let's begin with um, when did you decide to take the community producer classes here at the University of Oklahoma? on Channel 28. I think Multimedia. I had my class, I believe it was August of 94. It's been about mm -hmm. a year and a half. Mm -hmm. I came in, I was, had the beginning training class with Alan Chan. Uh -huh. And then uh, for, for about a year, I worked mostly on uh, RSGP, which is now called We Are All Good, mm -hmm. an entertainment show with Prabhat Gautam as the producer. And of course, I've been learning all that time from Prabhat and uh, Pinky and Brody and Bob on the staff here and mm -hmm. Jim Jones, the mother of us all, the oh, definitely, <laughs> studio definitely. supervisor, executive director person around here. Mm -hmm. And so I, I basically spent that year just sort of learning the trades and how to do the different things involved in a show before I uh -huh. attempted to produce my own. Uh-huh. Oh, that is wonderful. Well, what about, uh, let's talk about why you, you chose to do your show and how you came about the name WordPath. Mm. I don't exactly remember how WordPath came to mind. Of course, mm -hmm. I was thinking of, of the word Warpath. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the idea that the need to save Indian languages is so urgent because most of them are only spoken by the elder people in the tribe. And uh -huh. so if, if the younger people aren't, you know, don't start learning again pretty soon, then these languages are going to die out really quickly. So you have to really fight for this. Mm -hmm. You have to fight to get money and you have to fight to get people's attention uh -huh. and fight to develop curricula and dictionaries and all the teaching things that mm -hmm. in some cases don't exist yet. And we have to do all this really fast. So uh -huh. the idea of fighting, I guess, got me onto uh -huh. word path. That's neat. And I love your opening that trail, that get into your car and yeah. head out across I've country. I've always liked that notion, too, because I like travel and nature. And that's one of the reasons I chose the Ketchishana opening music that I did, mm -hmm. because he involves, uh, he not only involves traditional flute music with some modern sounds like choo-choo trains, uh -huh. <laughs> but there's uh -huh. a lot of nature in there, too. Almost all the way through that uh, piece that we use on the opening mm -hmm. are water sounds, like a, a little trickling mm -hmm. brook or something. Mm -hmm. I find it really, it really kind of connects you to nature and and to the path imagery and all of that. Very appropriate for, the, for your show, yeah. a absolutely. Let's see, um, I understand that you wanted to educate the general public, and let's go on down the line and tell us some more about some of our goals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess I sort of had mostly two types of audience in mind. Mm -hmm. um, first, like you say, the general public. Uh, mm -hmm. When I first came to Oklahoma State and was teaching in the English department a few years back, uh, I was teaching some undergraduate introductions to linguistics and things like that, general mm -hmm. courses about uh, linguistics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I made it my business right away to get some idea of what Indian languages were spoken in the state because I like to tell the students what some of the most widely spoken languages of the world are, uh -huh. some of the most widely spoken languages of our country and then of our state. So mm -hmm. I had to do a lot of research really quickly to find mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. what was going on in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And when I got to the, the day where we talked about the languages of Oklahoma, a lot of, a lot of the students would just be so surprised. 
-hmm. They would say, gee, we knew we had Indians, but we didn't know any of them spoke their languages anymore. Uh -huh. And I was just kind of flabbergasted because these were kids who had grown up in Oklahoma and lived here all their lives and been mm -hmm. supposedly taught about Indian culture a little bit in their mm -hmm. school classes, mm -hmm. and yet they really just knew nothing about the language situation. So I knew right away that the average person in Oklahoma doesn't really appreciate what we have here in terms of linguistic diversity. Mm -hmm. So you did a lot of researching and out in the field preparation for doing this show and contacting the well, people yeah, and lining up. Some of up. it I had already done in conjunction with teaching classes uh -huh. or with a research job that I had at OU for a year. Uh -huh. um, so I'd already done some traveling and met some people and found out who mm -hmm. some of the language teachers were, but it's an ongoing mm -hmm. process. In mm -hmm. fact, just since the show has started, I've met some people that I didn't know before and, mm -hmm. and have really learned a lot from them and, and mm -hmm. met other people through them. It's a really wonderful networking oh, kind of thing. That's that's great. Well, I found a, about going back to school that an education is so important and it really doesn't have an age limitation to it. You never can, uh, no matter what age you, you are, stop just, learning, you might as well just, mm -hmm. <laughs> just be... Um, Turn off the switch in the back. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> so I um, admire you for the fact yeah. of, that you're uh, wanting to preserve the history and the mm -hmm. cultural... Of, um, so actually, so that's my main, one of my main audiences, uh -huh. is just sort of the general public to kind uh -huh. of raise consciousness about the cultural uh, richness and languages of the state. Mm -hmm. But the other audience is uh, Indian people in Norman and the surrounding area and people mm -hmm. who may get copies of our tapes indirectly and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, people who maybe are interested in learning their languages. And so mm -hmm. when I have someone on who's teaching a class, I make sure they say, a contact number or a way of enrolling in the class if the class is open or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe some of these people even would be thinking about teaching a class of their own and they'd like to hear the experiences of other Indian language teachers mm -hmm. and, you know, just kind of benefit from some of their successes and mistakes and whatever. I'm trying to get some networking going that way too among uh -huh. people that are Indian people that are interested in saving their own languages mm -hmm. and cultures and mm -hmm. give them a chance to sort of meet each other. Mm -hmm. Well, generally, um, like, where would the language be spoken once they say hello and, they, and the young people, once they acquire this, are they planning to pass it on to generation after generation by the fact that you're preserving it? Well, you're mm, going it's to kind of a complicated them. question. Uh -huh. But what I, um, I, I kind of mentioned some of this on our first show, that uh -huh. in a way I see language preservation as kind of having two facets. One is you can save a language in the sense that you just tape record it or write it down or, uh -huh. or you know, just kind of take it, you know, put it on your tape, put it on the shelf, it's saved in uh -huh. a sense. But uh -huh. if you really want to save a language so that it's uh -huh. still a, a living language, uh -huh. then you need to have the children. You Learn. Know, the, the children really are the key. If uh -huh. children don't grow up speaking it, then you know, as you, if you it. learn as an adult, you never become fully fluent. You uh -huh. usually don't become fully fluent, uh -huh. and it's much more difficult. But the key is to get those elders, who are the really expert speakers, get them ideally in the preschools or in uh -huh. the homes at a very early age when you can get the children at age two, three, four, uh -huh. five, when they can learn uh -huh. so easily uh -huh. and get those children learning easily so then it's not even like a study for them. You don't uh -huh. have to give them a class. You just have uh -huh. to expose them to it and play with them and sing to them uh -huh. and talk to them and they start learning it naturally the way uh -huh. we all learn our first language or languages. Uh -huh. It's just that that process was interrupted for a, number, a couple of generations basically in most uh -huh. of the Indian tribes because of uh -huh. government policies and I you see. know, the realities of life yes. in this country. People have focused so much on English, and now they're realizing that if they don't start focusing on their own language again and teaching the young people, it, it might be lost pretty mm -hmm. soon. Now, so. are you planning to have some uh, programs and, uh, with various guests on that uh, are from different Native American groups? Yeah, we've had, well, we've had five programs so far. First, we had a, a kind of introductory program, mm -hmm. and then we had uh, our next program, uh, I, I'm sure you were especially interested in because it was about Cherokee language. We had uh, Bobby Blossom mm -hmm. and um, Anita Lynch, who assists him in his Cherokee classes here in Norman, uh -huh. and they talked about the Cherokee language. Mm -hmm. um, we also had uh, Linda Alexander and Ted Isham talking about Creek, and we've had two Comanche guests so far, oh. Richard Cotaponi and Ronald Red Elk. Mm -hmm. So those but, have been uh, your recent guests. And right. And we uh, like to get guests from every tribe that still speaks the language, speaks uh -huh. their traditional language in Oklahoma. Eventually, I'm thinking of this as kind of a one-year project. Mm -hmm. um, you and had so a show on recently. We'll gradually that, make our way around. That was really great, and it was the little children going to a workshop to learn to speak their oh, language. That was in one of our Comanche programs. Is that yeah, what it was a Comanche preschool program. It was great, yeah. just great. Well, yeah. I, I we want to do that, that whenever possible. And we, usually, typically, I'll have a guest in the studio, mm -hmm. and I'll ask them to tell about their own language history mm -hmm. and, and tell me how to greet them in their language mm -hmm. and uh, tell about whatever courses, classes mm -hmm. they're teaching or whatever they're doing with mm -hmm. their language and why it's important to them. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, 
uh, if people can't make it to the studio or if there's some event going on like that Comanche preschool, we try mm -hmm. to go to them and, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. take our little one or two person crew and go out and tape that and bring that in so we can insert that into the program too mm -hmm. so that you can actually see language preservation and progress out there in the community. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, f what is the real purpose that it says on this a language and cultural connection? What, mm -hmm. what do you have in mind? Uh, well, I always try to ask guests about that. Some mm -hmm. have had more to say about that than others. I think it's almost it's such a given that sometimes people aren't used to talking about it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some people, I guess, I wouldn't say this, and, and my guests wouldn't say this either, but some people might say, well, why save Indian languages? If we all mm -hmm. talk English, isn't it mm -hmm. easier just to talk English? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons that many people have for feeling this attachment for their traditional language, even mm -hmm. if they themselves don't speak it well, they feel mm -hmm. like it's special to them, mm -hmm. is because it's connected to so many cultural things, their music mm -hmm. and storytelling and uh -huh. oh, just all sorts of things, hand games and lullabies and uh -huh. a lot of things that are done in the language uh, even things like kin terms. People, a lot of Comanche children grow up not speaking Comanche, but calling their grandma kaku, which is the word oh. for your maternal grandmother. And oh. so that kaku has a special place in their heart, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so it, Indian language preservation isn't just a matter of practicalities. I suppose the most mm -hmm. practical thing would be that we would all speak English and forget any mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any other languages that might be of interest mm -hmm. to people. Just say, well, that's not important. But oh, but to most me it's people very do important. say for these cultural reasons mm -hmm. it is very important. Mm -hmm. And even for mm -hmm. reasons Ronald Red Elk was talking about, a, a sort of identity reason that mm -hmm. if you, as you learn the Comanche language and come to appreciate it, you feel more of an identity as a Comanche person mm -hmm. and more mm -hmm. of kind of self-esteem really mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. right down to it. And I just think it's wonderful to preserve the family history. Do they tell you some interesting stories of uh, events that happened when you go out in the field to oh, interview them? Yes. Well, just through the years stories. doing linguistic work, I have just felt so privileged to uh, hear all these stories about, uh, uh, mostly from old people. I mean, most mm -hmm. of my Indian friends are rather elderly, mm -hmm. and they have, you know, a life's worth of stories oh. to tell. Everything from being a code talker in the war, in mm -hmm. World War II, mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. uh, walking to Wichita Falls from, from, uh, from down near Walters. Uh, to see movies on the weekend in the, oh. in the 20s, I believe it was, Albert Nakwadi <laughs> has told me about this, and then later he got a horse and he would ride. And, oh, and, and just, it, I mean, Oklahoma is a unique state in that it's, it's developed so rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of issues of, of history between whites and Indians, which are not <laughs> entirely pleasant with uh -huh. that, obviously, but uh -huh. uh, it, it really, it makes anyone who's, say, in their 70s and 80s today, mm -hmm. that, that grew up that whole time within the state of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. territory of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. um, especially interesting because their lifetime spans uh, uh, from the days of just uh, walking and teepees to horse and buggy mm -hmm. to, you know, mm -hmm. jet planes and everything that we have today. Mm -hmm. And it's just mm -hmm. such a, it's just marvelous to know people who have such interesting lives and mm -hmm. have gone through so many different things culturally and historically and just mm -hmm. in terms of technology and what kind of house they lived in and, and what they oh, that used must for been transportation. Wonderful. All of this has changed so much for people uh -huh. in that age bracket. Uh -huh. So if there are any of your viewers that uh, would like you to make a trip to their home, like a lot of them being older, uh, yes. wouldn't be able to make it. And so you will be uh, on the road quite a bit then interviewing them? Yes, in fact, um, we, we have had trouble sometimes getting a particular guest in a particular week. I'm learning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as I go, and I'm learning mm -hmm. how, how much footwork and telephone work is involved in producing mm -hmm. a program. Mm -hmm. You not only have to get a guest lined up and make sure that if they can't make it suddenly, you'll have someone backed up that can, you know, backing them up that can mm -hmm. fill in for them, but you've got mm -hmm. to get your crew there and everything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I can use all the help I can get. If anyone would like mm -hmm. to suggest uh, potential guests or if they would like to be a guest, if mm -hmm. they all... If they're mm -hmm. involved in saving an Indian language, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we would love to hear from them. We have mm -hmm. we always put up our um, post uh -huh. office box address at the end of the closing credits, and uh -huh. maybe uh, if people in the booth can get that up now, there's a page we'd like to show the address. That would be really uh, neat. Now, if we can get that up too. And could you go ahead and say verbally then? Uh, let me think now. It's post office box two eight seven two. Norman, Oklahoma, 73070. There, oh, there we go. All got right. Two. Got it right, didn't That's I? That's <laughs> right. So you do um, have a lot of telephoning and a lot of uh, shifting and rescheduling and yes, so forth. Yes, and, you know, help would be very welcome. We'd mm -hmm. love to hear about people that would like to be on the show and, mm -hmm. and start mm -hmm. talking. You know, it mm -hmm. takes some time because if people aren't familiar with the show, if they're not in the Norman area, they haven't seen it, mm -hmm. odds mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. And so I need to, you know, 
uh, show them uh, like a sample show and say, you know, this is the kind of thing we do. Would mm -hmm. you be interested? And it just mm -hmm. takes a lot of travel and phoning mm -hmm. and mailing mm -hmm. tapes back and forth. And mm -hmm. it takes a little mm -hmm. while. So mm -hmm. we would love to hear from people. That's great with that address. I do hope that people will call you. And maybe they have an aunt or a grandmother that has lots of history to share with Oklahoma and your viewing audience. Uh, it would be really nice. Well, what about... Um, the uh, the fact that with the training you've had with the community to produce a program and everything, mm -hmm. do you feel that uh, other people would enjoy that too? And and um, oh, you yes. thought it was a wonderful program. Yeah, I did. I, I really got into it not so much because I was interested in television production, but because mm -hmm. I was interested in the Indian languages, and I mm -hmm. thought it would be a good way to sort mm -hmm. of um, mm -hmm. as a to sort of showcase people who are working very to hard to it. save their languages. And mm -hmm. I could learn something mm -hmm. linguistically, and I would learn more about the state and my neighbors. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all, for all of these kind of reasons. I was interested, mm -hmm. and I was really quite surprised how much I just love the video production. Isn't it wonderful? Of it. It's just so much fun. To and learn. I think it's the teachers in us. There's We're a lot both to teachers. learn. I guess. And that and we always it. enjoy sharing our knowledge or yeah. always continuously researching. Yeah. And it is a lot of work to be a community producer. You have to be kind of dedicated and have a goal for doing but, that. And there's an awful lot to learn, but the neat thing is that you can take your, your beginning introductory class, which they offer mm -hmm. the third Thursday, I believe it is, of mm -hmm. each month. Mm -hmm. uh, you just call up the studio and make arrangements, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and you can enroll mm -hmm. in that class. And once you've done that, then you can start serving on someone's crew. You don't have to produce your own show right away, but you right. can sort of apprentice yourself to the others that are ahead of you and, uh -huh. and learn from them and kind of learn one aspect at a time at your own pace. Mm -hmm. You can go, mm -hmm. you can just uh, always be on camera or you can mm -hmm. learn camera mm -hmm. and audio and, mm -hmm. and it's so switching exciting, on the control room and, and the whole shebang. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's totally up to you how fast or how slow you mm -hmm. want to go and mm -hmm. how much you want to get out of it. But I just get a kick out of it. It's a That's lot of fun. Great. I'll never look at television programs the same again. <laughs> I'll look on there and say, I wonder why they use camera two for that shot. That's kind of creative. That's mm -hmm. interesting. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I or, never would have thought such a thing before. That's right. And, and I learned a lot by watching the professionals on their programs of wide shot and yeah. uh, whatever. Well, the yeah. studio telephone number, I'd like to give that out, is 325 yeah. 0393. If you're interested in being a community producer, call the studio and schedule a time for the classes and enjoy and perhaps come in and work on Alice's show or on mine or many other shows that are being We'd produced over there. It's really neat. Well, Alice, I'm yeah. so excited. I want to learn all about your show. Let's continue. I'll tell you what, can I um, get in a little. Uh, 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 your invitation boomer? about my contest. Your boomer singer. I have in mind a, a WordPath contest. Great. I think we, I think we have about a, a, in the pot about $25 as a potential prize. Please write me if you'd like to contribute to the prize. Uh -huh. Now here's the contest. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that the OU fight song, uh, popularly called Boomer Sooner. And you're going to sing it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm a listening bird. You're the singer. Oh, it goes something like, Boomer Sooner, Boomer Sooner. We all know it. Boomer Sooner, Boomer Sooner. I wasn't sure if there were any more words to, that, to it than that, but I called up the band director's office today uh -huh. to find out more about it. And there is this, there are actually two verses. It starts oh. off, Boomer Sooner, Boomer Sooner. And then it goes, uh, I'm a Sooner born and a Sooner bred. And when I die, I'll be a Sooner dead. Ra, Oklahoma, Ra, Oklahoma, Ra, Oklahoma. Okay, you. Okay, you. Okay, and then the second verse is the same, except that instead of Boomer Sooner, it just says Oklahoma those uh -huh. four or five times at the beginning. <laughs> so that, those are the words to the song. And, of course, the most prominent words are Boomer and Sooner, which refer to some rather painful times in Oklahoma Indian history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, there's no way we're going to talk people out of singing Boomer Sooner. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a steadfast part it's of Oklahoma tradition. culture, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. So, and mm -hmm. people don't really think the ugly thoughts that mm -hmm. you could think mm -hmm. in connection with Boomer and Sooner. They just mm -hmm. think about the OU team. Mm -hmm. But I thought, wouldn't it be nice if we had some alternative wording to this song mm -hmm. written by Indians in mm -hmm. their own language? Mm -hmm. So I'd like to invite anyone who speaks an Indian language or can work with an elder who speaks the language to not necessarily to translate these words. I mean, mm -hmm. Indians mm -hmm. probably don't want to sing that much about boomers and singers, <laughs> anyway. But just to have some kind of, you know, fight song type of words. It can uh -huh. just say something like rah, 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 but mm -hmm. with some words to it. Mm -hmm. uh, in any Indian language that's spoken in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And we'll get together the Indian members of our crew and perhaps a few other uh, honorary members of a judging panel. And I want to give people a good long time so that they can be talking about this and mm -hmm. telling their friends and we can get mm -hmm. some more publicity. Now, what would your time frame be? Let's say maybe... Uh, 
I was thinking maybe we'd get this in by about June 15th. Mm -hmm. That would give us plenty of time to make a selection and have people be able to practice the Indian version of Boomer Sooner in time for the fall football season. <laughs> and come on and the show and do, do their and rendition if they want to. That's I right. Mean, and they would would, so, so in order to enter, they should send a tape with a mm -hmm. rendition on it and mm -hmm. then a written version with a translation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, we'll, and we'll have the winner or maybe mm -hmm. a couple of winners come in on, on mm -hmm. the show and uh, mm -hmm. perform mm -hmm. their version. And, uh, so that people can start learning it. Oh, I think, I think it would be a wonderful thing. We don't have to do away with Boomer sooner, but it would uh -huh. be nice to have this Indian cultural uh -huh. alternative that people could also mm -hmm. learn. Mm -hmm. That would be really neat. And so, so they again, send their they need to that, that address. Same address mm -hmm. The same address. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have some forms made out or something that you could mail to them or what? I hadn't thought that far Actually, yet. Actually, they could pick it up We're going to probably, I'm going to check in about every week, say a little bit more about this contest, and yeah. it may take shape as we right. go. Right, great. So far, I think if they could just send the tape with their version of the song, it could be either mm -hmm. the one verse or the two, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and also write out, uh, if there's a writing system for the language they're using, write it out mm -hmm. some way so that we can kind of see the sounds, mm -hmm. and then write out the English translation. Mm -hmm. And uh, when oh. we, sometime before, around June 15th, uh -huh. we will... Um, have our panel of judges who are yet mm -hmm. to be selected, but mm -hmm. I have some people in mind. All right, that's <laughs> um, great. And that be prepared. And, and we would have each tape reviewed by someone, it, say a Comanche tape reviewed by someone who is a, a uh, that really uh, the fluent language. speaker mm -hmm. of Comanche or a Cherokee mm -hmm. tape mm -hmm. reviewed by a Cherokee mm -hmm. speaker mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth. And then we'll have to do a show with them. Yes, we'll listen. definitely have That'll them on be the fun. show. We'll, and have and to we'll do try to promote show. this. Uh, now, if we, we have to reserve the right if we get no entries or only really half hearted entries. We have to reserve the right not to give a prize. But That's I figure right. with, with such a long run for the contest, we should mm -hmm. get some really fine mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. proposals mm -hmm. in for Boomer Sooner in mm -hmm. an Indian language. We I hope mean, so by June 15th. <laughs> I'll write that down. June 15th, the day. Right. Okay. June Maybe you can 15th. work on a Cherokee one. <laughs> together with some Cherokee speakers and see what you can work up. All right. Um, I, hope, I hope people will have fun with it. I think that sounds great. Speaking right. of Cherokees, we didn't. Um, we were going to mention your oh, little basket yes. here and something about your heritage. I think we still have time. <laughs> Why don't you uh, tell us about this okay. really charming basket? Uh, that you I, I think that Shirley's coming in on this little basket now, and um, uh, this is. Um, it's going to take a while. Um, it's a Cherokee Indian uh, basket, and my aunt uh, was a Cherokee Indian woman basket weaver. And she was from the Cherokee Indian Reservation in Western North Carolina. And this is over 50 years old, and it's very, very dear to me. Mm. And um, I did learn to make the Cherokee baskets at um, my um, Girl Scout camp at mm -hmm. home in Virginia, mm -hmm. and I understand you're from Virginia too. Yes, we're both from Richmond, aren't we? So, yep, that's where we are. And so we, we've learned a lot about the Cherokee Indian culture and, uh, from the mountains up in Asheville and mm -hmm. uh, Cherokee, um, North Carolina as well. So I'm delighted with that, and I, I'm going to pursue the history and see what I can find out about the various names. I now have a few of the names, and I think it'd be kind of fun you, to you do that. You know that you can go up and uh, look at the roles and so forth at the Oklahoma State Historical Society. All right. right. Yeah, that, yeah, That's where a lot of people can you, research uh, that. Trace your ancestry there. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, I think that would be great. Oh, that, really you were great. just telling me today something about um, an Oklahoma and North Carolina Cherokee connection about this uh, production, the drama? Oh, yes. What was that? This, this favorite aunt, uh, her name was Etta Childress. She took me as a young girl to see uh, the Cherokee Indian drama called Unto These Hills. And it was on the Mountainside Theater in Cherokee, North Carolina. And it was a wonderful experience as a little young girl to get to go out to a drama and with your favorite aunt is a real yeah. treat. And she just, she just was a delight. But her basket work was just featured everywhere, and, and people loved it. And there were many people, uh, the women that were in this group that she did, the Cherokee women uh, weavers, basket weavers. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to you now. We have just a few more minutes, Alice. And what else about your show that you want to share with the viewing Well, audience? I was trying to think today as we were preparing for the show, some of the things I've learned. And uh, the show is sort of evolving. A lot of our crew are sort of learning their craft as they go, and mm -hmm. I certainly am. And I'm mm -hmm. also having to learn the additional skill of interviewing, which I, I, mm -hmm. look, uh, I look to you as one model for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I also spend a lot of time watching Tom Snyder and uh, all, you know, uh -huh. Letterman and all these people on TV to try to get some ideas. Mm -hmm. Partly I wouldn't just be sitting and conversing be comfortable with, with, with my guests, guest. uh, but that's sort of easier said than done. For instance, mm -hmm. I've had, well, I had one guest, I won't say who it was, but right before we had the countdown, like three, two, one, you're on the air, uh -huh. he leaned over to me and he said, well, you may find it's hard to get me to talk sometimes. And I kind of went, oh, oh no. one of those and yes I, or I no had another, people. I had two guests that time, so I immediately said to her, if he seems to 
kind of freeze up and get nervous or can't think of anything to say for a second, please feel free to jump in, uh -huh. which she did and it was helpful on a right, couple of occasions. Right. Because not everybody is used to being interviewed mm -hmm. and when they're not, it takes mm -hmm. a really skilled interviewer to mm -hmm. bring out of them mm -hmm. what they have to say and it would be mm -hmm. a shame not to get it out if they have things to say. So uh -huh. there's a whole skill there that I'm really just beginning mm -hmm. to learn. Um, well, that was an important one to learn, but the second important one is don't ever give the guests the complete rundown of the Q&As because they will jump ahead of you and you uh -huh. might come okay. short well, that's of, a good tip. of particular information to be sharing with your guests uh -huh. and your yeah. viewers. So that was really, but the yes and no ones are difficult. You just have to carry the show on yourself. Yeah, I've learned not to ask too many yes and no questions because <laughs> you usually just get a yes and no back and then you're that's kind right. of sitting there. Another sitting thing there. I've had to learn and I'm still right. working on it is not to say, oh, too much. Mm -hmm. I was dismayed when I got and I dubbed off my first show and went home to look at it because I don't have cable TV myself. So I went home, oh boy, my first show. Uh -huh. And I said, welcome to WordPath. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I went, oh no, you've got to learn not to do that so much. I think I'm getting better. But, you know, these things take practice. It's just, just fantastic. And we're all working really hard. I think I'm, I feel good about the show overall and I think it's, oh. it's going to be useful. It but, you know, it's going to uh, get better as it goes. For instance, we had this map of Oklahoma. The first time we had it up, we just kind of pinned it to the Pendleton blanket in the back there, and it looked kind of cruddy, to tell you the truth, a little wrinkly and stuff. And it, and it was too white, and the camera had a hard time not getting a glare off of it. Mm -hmm. So I gradually got that thing chopped down to size a little bit, put some coloring over uh -huh. it, toned it down, and now I just kind of keep it behind the table, bring it out when we need it, and put oh, it back. So gosh. I'm learning as I go. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I really want you to know that we have number 10 Story Lane, and our many viewers really uh, enjoy your show, and, uh, and especially want to say thank you for this interview. And uh, I wish you continued success, and especially I want to pay tribute to you, Alice Anderton, because as a CP, you are par excellence. Even though oh, you have just so started, you are doing a great, great job, and I am so proud of you uh, preserving the Indian uh, Native American history and culture, and especially the language. Well, thank you. You're just too kind, Jean. You're a good friend, great. and I'm certainly learning a lot from you, and I thank you for this interview, for coming and hosting for me tonight. And uh, we'll look forward to doing another show together. I hope so. See you all next time on WordPath or and Number, number 10, 10 Story Lane. Story Lane. Right. <laughs> That wins. <laughs> Na hene yo hene, na hene yo hene, ana ma gwana kita, wa pene ma na oni kita. Na hene yo hene, na hene yo hene, ana ma gwana kita, wa pene ma na oni kita. Na hene yo hene, na hene yo.